Hey everyone, Matt here with Nightrun Studio and welcome to another Let's Make It Tower Defense game video. At this point we've got our archer working pretty well with knockback effect and regular spawning arrows, but wouldn't it be nice if we could have her actually walk into place, take out her bow when she's in range and then start firing? That's where we're headed in this tutorial, so uh, let's get started. Now we've already got a script to make our archer shoot, but we don't have one for movement. So let's just head down here where we can right click, create, C sharp script, and let's just call this one defender movement. All right, similar to our robot movement, we're just gonna start up at the top here by declaring a public float called speed, which we can affect in unity to decide how fast we want her to go. We're also gonna need to make a public rigid body 2D reference. Let's just call this one defender RB. Down in our update then, we're just going to make our defender RB dot velocity. So we're gonna set it directly with an equal sign here. We're gonna make it equal to vector two dot right, as she'll always be moving to the right, multiplied by speed. And in order to make that movement really nice and smooth, we'll change this from update to fixed update. And that should do it. Now before we can test that out, we just have a little setup to do. So let's click on our defender, add component, and we can type in defender movement. At this point we can give some speed to her and we need to find the defender's rigid body, which we haven't added yet. So let's just click add component. We can type in rigid body 2D here and then be sure to drag it into that box. Now if we were to test right now, she would try to walk, but she'd fall through the earth. So we need to add a collider. I'm just gonna put a box collider 2D on here and you'll notice that there's a little bit of a problem. My collider showed up in a strange place, which is just indicating that there's a separation between my sprite and my parent game object. So I'm just gonna click on the sprite, head over to transform, and you'll notice there's some strange numbers that got inputted here. I'm just gonna zero those out so that my sprite is indeed on top of the parent object. I'm gonna do the same thing to my bow and just quickly move it back into place. Now I can go back to my parent object and size that box collider up just right. All right, so we've got some definite issues, but she is in fact moving forward toward the enemies. Now, <laughs> first off, let's just um, go into her rigid body. Go down to constraints and make sure to freeze her Z rotation so she doesn't keep falling over. And if you want to, you could do the same thing for your robots if you don't want them having that spinning movement. I'm still having fun with it though, so I'm gonna leave theirs on. All right, now that we've got her moving and shooting, we're gonna create a very simple state machine. A state machine is just a programming architecture that causes different behaviors based on the state of an object. So in our case, our defender can be idle, walking, or shooting. And so we'll create a state machine script that will determine which of these states is happening when, and we'll tell them to actually happen. Now a state machine can be incredibly complex or they can actually be quite simple. And we're gonna use a very simple version to get ourselves started here. So. Let's head down to our scripts where we can right click, go to create, C sharp script. I'm just gonna call this one Archer State Machine. So the first thing this script needs is a way to keep track of our different states. So we're gonna come down below the brackets of our class altogether, and we're gonna make an enumeration. We'll type public enum, and we'll call this Archer State. In here, we can just type the names of our different states. So we can include idle, walking, and shooting. Don't forget to put a semicolon at the end of this class. Now the reason we put this down below all the other brackets is because we want it to be accessible for other scripts as well so they can also use these variables. At this point we can come up top where we'll make a public archer state and just call it archer state. This is where we'll actually store which state we're currently in. Now if we click on our defender and you take a look at this script we can see now that there's this drop down box that includes our three states. So at the start of the game, we want to make sure that our archer state is set to archer state dot walking so that she actually starts moving. We're now storing the data, but it's not actually doing anything yet. So let's head down to our update method. Here we'll just add an if statement so that our archer only checks the range of enemies if she's actually in a walking state. At that point, she will cast out a raycast hit 2D and we'll just call this hit. This is a variable type that just stores information about what is in front of our player. The way it works is we're going to access physics 2 draycast This command just casts out a ray, and it's going to need some arguments to figure out how to do that. The first is going to be the origin point of the ray, so it's going to start at the transform dot position of the player, so right at her position. Next, it needs to know what direction to cast the ray. Because she's always looking to the right, we can use vector2.right. 
Our third variable is how far we want to look, so essentially our detection range. Now I can type that in, but we haven't made that variable yet, so we have to head up top and do that. Let's just make a public float called detection range. And I'll just initialize this to six units, but you can try out different numbers for yourself. Now at this point, our raycast hit is going to return a value anytime it hits anything. But really, we're only wanting our defender to be interested in whether or not she sees an enemy within range. So here, we're going to add enemy layer, which of course our script doesn't know what to do with just yet. So once more, we'll head up top, where we're going to make a public layer mask called enemy layer. A layer mask just allows us to filter through different items and look for ones that are in a specific layer. So at this point, we're just going to add an if statement. Oh, don't forget your semicolon up there. If our raycast hit finds a collider that's on the enemy layer, so if it's not null, null would mean empty, we're just going to change our archer state to be archer state dot shooting. We've now created a state machine. We start idle, switch to walking at start, and then once an enemy's in range, go to shooting. However, at this point, we're just storing states. They aren't actually doing anything. So in Unity, you'll notice that we now have this enemy layer dropdown, which currently says nothing. And that's because, oh, I actually went in and cheated earlier and created the enemy layer, but yours won't have that yet. So what you're going to need to do is, say, go to one of our robots, and up at the top where it says layer, click on that, and go to add layer. I've added mine in slot 6, but it doesn't really matter where you add it. Once you've done that, you can now shift-click all of your robots, and then on layer, make sure that you give them the enemy layer. You do not need to change the children, you can just do the parent object. At that point, you can go back to your defender and make sure that your defender knows that the enemy layer is actually the enemy layer. With that done, our raycast hit can discern between enemies and non-enemies. Let's try it out. So you'll notice at start, we're in idle, but once the game begins, it switches right away to walking. Don't worry about that shooting, but look at the fact that it changes to shooting once we get within range of the enemies. Obviously, we need her to stop walking and start shooting, but at least our states are changing appropriately. So now we just want to make it so that those states actually do something. The way we're going to do that is you'll see that we have this defender movement script that makes our defender move. We have a bow script that makes her shoot. We're just going to make it so that our state manager actually toggles these scripts on and off depending on what she's supposed to be doing. So in order to turn those scripts on and off, we're going to have to make a reference to them. So let's begin with a public defender movement reference that we'll just call defender movement. And then right below that, we'll make a public bow reference called bow. At the start of the game, as soon as our archer state is set to walking, we want to make sure that the bow is not on. So we'll go dot enabled equals false. Now, once our archer state changes to shooting, we'll get that bow and we'll turn it back on. So we'll set enabled to true. And we also want to turn off our movement script. So we'll go defender movement dot enabled equals false. So in Unity now, our defender just needs to know where those scripts are. So we can grab our defender movement and put it in that box. We can drag our bow into the bow box and it'll automatically find the script on that object. So now at the beginning, she starts walking, constantly casting out that ray. She found them and so now she starts firing. All right, that's working pretty well. We're going to add just one last bonus feature though. It would be kind of cool if she put her bow away while walking and then only took it out when she's ready to shoot. This can be done quite easily in our Archer State Machine script. So at the top here, I'm just going to make yet another public reference. This time it's going to be to the sprite renderer on our bow. So I'll call this bow SR. And all I want to do here is just make it so that when the game starts, we'll make bow SR dot enabled equals false. So we'll turn off the bow. And then down here, when we turn our bow on, we'll also turn on our bow sprite render. Once again, we just need to make sure that our defender knows where to find the bow. So we'll just grab the, oops. So we'll just grab the bow, drag it into that box. It'll find the sprite render for us. Now, even though she had the bow when we were in our scene, you'll notice it is away now at the start. She moves into range, pulls out her bow, and begins to fire. All right, we've still got some work to do, of course, but things are coming along nicely, and this is starting to feel more and more like uh, something that resembles a video game. Hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like or subscribe. Otherwise, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.